Hi everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar here, and welcome once again to Chemistry Universe. And this is the last part of aryl halides. And in this one, though we are not going to look at aryl halides in particular, but uh, we'll be doing preparation and uh, some of the reactions of aryl halides. But our main focus of attention in this video is the mechanism ARSN1. And as I've mentioned before, the ARSN1 mechanism uh, is doesn't show up in aryl halides, it shows up in benzene diazonium salts. So we're going to look at that and look at the reactions, some of the very important and common reactions of uh, benzene diazonium salts, which are all based on ARSN1. So let's get on with the show. This is part three, the last part of aryl halides, and this is titled ARSN1 with benzene diazonium halides. So here we go. Uh, the first one is benzene diazonium chloride. We will first of all understand how it is prepared. Now, benzene diazonium chloride is prepared by reacting aniline with NaNO2 and HCl between 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. Now, in this one, what happens is that uh, basically we need NO plus ion. And NO plus ion is what reacts with aniline to produce the benzene diazonium salt. But NO plus is generated when you have HNO2 reacting with an acid. HNO2 on the other hand, it's a pretty unstable compound, stable only up to around 5 degrees Celsius. And therefore, HNO2 cannot be prepared and kept in the lab. So it is generated in C2 during the reaction in the situation. And for that we use NaNO2 and HCl. So ultimately the reaction is happening between HNO2 and aniline, but NaNO2 and HCl are the ones which help you create HNO2 in the first place. So this is aniline here. NaNO2 HCl, 0 to 5 degrees and you get the benzene diazonium chloride in this case. Aniline and BDC. Similarly, you can take uh, the naphthalene version of this and you have NaNO2 and HCl. And again, you get the uh, diazonium chloride here. And as I said, the function of NaNO2 and HCl is to generate HNO2, which otherwise is unstable and cannot be stored. Now, after above 5 degrees Celsius, the diazonium salts decompose by liberating nitrogen gas. Now, what you need to understand is the diazonium salts of aliphatic molecules are extremely unstable because of the very good leaving group of N2. And therefore, they are generally not even prepared. If you try to, to, to prepare an aliphatic diazonium salt, what will happen is the solvent is water. The water would attack the carbon evolving nitrogen and you will get alcohol instead. But at least in the case of the benzene uh, diazonium case, they are stable at least till 5 degrees. So whatever reactions you want to do on them, you can do it below 5 degrees and get the results. Now, in case of primary amines, uh, nitrogen gas is liberated always irrespective of temperature. And let's see the mechanism of formation of uh, benzene diazonium chloride. You have NaNO2 and HCl, first of all, forming HNO2 nitrous acid at NaCl. Now, this nitrous acid looks like this. In the presence of HCl, it will take an H+. Plus and it is uh, generally the O that takes the H plus and we will talk about the H plus after it reaches the OH. So you get something like this. This will eliminate water and you get NO plus. So basically, this bond has moved here. Now, you have aniline and you have nitrosonium ion and they react when the nitrogen attacks the nitro, the uh, aniline nitrogen attacks the nitrosonium nitrogen, which is an electrophile, and you get something like this. Now here you have an intramolecular proton exchange. The H plus from this N moves to this O. Now it could have moved to this N also, but we are going to show it when it reaches the O because the forward reaction occurs only when it reaches the O. So you get something like this. 
Now here you have a resonating structure and this is the RDS, the, the attack of the nitrosonium ion on aniline. So you have um, this and there's a resonating structure, the lone pair on N and the pi bond goes to O and you get a resonating structure which looks like this. Again, there's a plus on N. So again, you have an intramolecular proton exchange. The H from N goes to OH. And now, water would leave. And as the water would leave, this nitrogen becomes positive. And the lone pair on this comes here to resonate with it. So I can show it like this. And eventually, you get the benzene diazonium ion. Now, the step in which the nitrosonium ion reacts with aniline is the RDS as I showed you. Because in acidic medium, the nucleophilicity of aniline decreases due to protonation. So we've always seen that whenever you have an acidic medium, the formation of diazonium slows down. Which means that, uh, and, and that happens because aniline gets formed into an anilinium ion and therefore no more has a lone pair to attack, uh, to attack with. So when we feel that uh, the protonation of aniline is sort of decreasing the rate, we deduce that that is the RDS. Uh, moreover, aniline is, as it is a weak nucleophile, due to delocalization of the lone pair. Resonating structures of diazonium ion. Now, we already saw that. Uh, the pi bond can go to the middle end and you will get the electrophilic N at the end. So, these are the two resonating structures. So, now let's look at the main one, AR-SN1 mechanism. Uh, and it's a very... Uh, but difficult mechanism to happen only happens because of nitrogen gas formed. What will happen is first the leaving group will go just like SN1. You get a carbocation and nitrogen gas. And if it is in closed container, there will be an equilibrium. And this is the RDS. It's very difficult to form. This is not a stable carbocation at all. No resonance taking place. Remember this positive is on an empty sp2 orbital. It cannot resonate in the ring. And in step two, this will be attacked by the nucleophile pretty fast and you get the product, nucleophilic substitution. And as you can see, more stable this becomes with the groups attached to it, the more would be the rate of ARSN2 because that is the RDS. The rate of ARSN2 is a proportional to, uh, I mean related to directly stability of aryl carbocation. And if you have releasing groups by plus I, as I always told you, Whenever something comes on the sp2 orbital of this, it is only the inductive effect that is operative. So anything that has a plus i effect, doesn't matter plus m or anything, only plus i is going to stabilize it. And the stability of the aryl carbocation is dependent, is independent of the resonance or hyperconjugation as a positive charge is on the ring. As I said, no mesomeric effect or no hyperconjugation has to be seen. So if I were to ask you to arrange the following uh, benzene ions, benzene carbocations, uh, between these, how would you do it? Pause the video now, uh, figure out the order and then play the video back. As I said, plus I effect. And as you can see, two has the best plus I effect, closest to plus, then third, then fourth, then one. So the order should be two, three, four, one. What would you say for this? Remember, only look at inductive effect. NH2 has a minus I effect. Closer it is, bigger the problem. Best is 1, then 4, then 3, then 2. Okay. Now here, I'm going to bring up a chart. I'm going to talk about the various nucleophilic substitutions of the, the diazonium salts. They're all of the same type. ARSN1. And uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is a reaction with CuCN and HCN. This forms a CN. And this is, uh, there's another way you can use CuCl and HCl and you have a chloride. And if you use copper and HCl, then also you'll get a Cl. If you use CuBr and HBr, guess what? You get a bromo. You can get bromo even with Cu and HBr. 
And if you use HBF4, you can get the fluoro one. If you use KI, you can get the iodo one. If you use H3PO2, you get benzene itself. You can use even ethanol, you'll get benzene. If you use steam instead, water, you'll get phenol. If you use H2S, you'll get the phenol correspondent of ethyl. If you use NaNa3, NaN3, you get the azide. And if you use the thiocyanate, you will get this. And as you can see, all of these are completely based on ARSN1. So a nucleophile comes, first the leaving group goes, you get a benzene carbocation, and then the, leaving, uh, the nucleophile comes and attacks, and you get the variety of products. And besides this, there are certain of these which have names. So let's check that out. So whenever you use CU something and HCN, it's called Sandmeyer reaction. This is also Sandmeyer. If you use only copper, it's called Gatterman reaction. Again, CUBR, Sandmeyer reaction. Only copper, Gatterman reaction. The fluorine, however, is called the balls shyman reaction. And with that, we have the preparation of aryl halides. And I think we have done sufficient preparation. One is by using benzene diazonium chloride. You just saw I got a fluoro, chloro, iodo, bromo, everything. So we have already discussed this. Then we use the borodin hunsdecker reaction. We have done that or that too. So you have the silver salt of a carboxylic acid, bromine, CCL4 and heat. You'll get Br right on top. And AgBr goes off and CO2 leaves. And another important reaction is the Rashik process. You take two mole of benzene, let's say, and correspondingly you take two mole of HCl and then you take O2. In the presence of Cu, Cl, Cu2Cl2 and heat, you will get the chlorobenzene and water. There's no need for you to uh, figure out the mechanism for this. And lastly, I'm going to look at one particular reaction, which is a very important reaction. This is uh, called chloral. Okay, we call it chloral. And here we have two chlorobenzenes. Now, he, now this reaction is a completely different type of reaction. It's actually an electrophilic aromatic substitution, which are yet to do. But it's a very important one. And at, at least in the case of uh, NCRT, it's given right in aryl halides. So I'm doing it this way. So consider it as a reaction of aryl halides. Now what happens is that uh, you treat this with concentrated h 2 4 and as I said, it's electrophilic aromatic substitution. What basically happens is this double bond O. Now what happens is this double bond O goes off and two of the benzene's para carbons attach to this carbon. So two bonds with O go and two of the para carbons attach here. And the H of these are left away and with O you get H2O. You get something like this. Can you see? Double bond goes away. Two of the para carbons attach and it will give you H2O. Now this particular compound is called para para prime dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane commonly known as DDT and insecticide. And it's a reaction of aryl halide. And as this is again a short video, this is where we are at. All right, so we have now completed aryl halides. That's good news. So we have done uh, ARSN2, we have done benzene, we have done ARSN1. In the next video, we will be starting another new topic. We are going to start hydrocarbons. And the first of the hydrocarbons that we do is alkanes. So basically hydrocarbons, we'll do four parts, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and aromatic hydrocarbons. So I'll catch you in the next one. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, stay healthy and this is Kalyan Kumar signing off have a wonderful day and thank you for watching this